viewers, well, I want to talk about something that actually happened last month, and it was a big news story, especially in the ex-Jehovah's Witness uh, community, stroke movement, whatever you want to call it. And at the time, there were, you know, one or two were asking me what my thoughts were on the story, and I, I decided not to put out a video because... They, frankly, there wasn't enough information about what had happened. And what happened was, frankly, uh, very, very tragic and something that's difficult to even contemplate. An ex-Jehovah's Witness named Lauren Stewart, who happened to be uh, a model, uh, she shot dead her husband and two children before turning the gun on herself. It was a murder-suicide. And in the aftermath of the shooting, there was an emotional uh, incident at the local Kingdom Hall in which uh, words were spoken. Um, basically, the local elders were told that uh, it, it was their responsibility for disfellowshipping uh, Lauren, that that was, that was at least partly the reason why why this had happened. Um, I, I obviously am the first to say that shunning and disfellowshipping is immoral and grotesque and unbiblical and there is never an excuse for it. On the other hand, I can't see that there is an excuse for killing someone. So in other words, if, I have a, if, I, if I'm going to have a choice between being shunned and being murdered, I think I'd rather, <laughs> I think I'd rather be shunned and and have an opportunity to build my life, rebuild my life. Uh, in other words, life is precious, and I don't appreciate anyone taking it from me. And therefore, I think care needs to be taken when you have something like this, when you have a murder suicide, not to create a martyr out of someone who has literally deprived others of their lives because of what's going on in his or her head. And that's something that I, uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to jump on the story because there, there's obviously a lot of emotion around this and a lot of those who, like me, are being shunned who, um, who might sympathise with what Lauren did. Although, again, I don't know how you can sympathise with, with slaughtering those who are nearest and dearest to you. But, as is always the case with when things like this happen, there are numerous factors to consider. And it's quite clear that, apart from being shunned, Lauren was also suffering from depression. She had lost her mother to cancer when she was 12, and she had mental illness that was untreated. All of that has to have had uh, some role in what she en ended up doing. But one of the reasons why I'm talking about this now is because more information has come to light. When, when the whole thing happened, there was talk of a suicide note, but the police had taken the suicide note, so there was no real way of knowing what the suicide note said. But now there's been an article, or in the last few days there's been an article in the Detroit Free Press, and I'm going to read to you some of what that article says. Um, Long-time family friend Joyce Taylor believes depression, shunning, and religion-based doomsday fears all played a role. She said that about six weeks before the killings, Lauren started getting religiously preoccupied and telling her, it's the end times, I know it is. Weeks later, Taylor saw her friend again. Lauren had a vacant look in her eyes. She was emotionally distressed. A week later, with her home decorated for Valentine's Day, Lauren Stewart killed her family. She left behind a suicide note. She said in the suicide note that she felt that by killing them, it was the only way to save them, recalled Taylor, 
who said police let her read the letter. She said she's sorry that she has to do this, but it was the only way to save them all. Taylor, a former Jehovah's Witness herself, who left the faith in 1986, explained, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that if you die on this side of Armageddon, you'll be resurrected in paradise. So that is the extra information that I've kind of been waiting for before I can comment on this. And just so you know, uh, Covert Fade has written a fantastic article um, exploring this issue uh, titled Shunning Depression and Armageddon Loophole Lead to Tragic JW Murder Suicide. Now, one of the things that both myself and Covert are eager to stress is that it is by no means taught by Watchtower that you need to kill your family or indeed anyone in order to get them through Armageddon. That is just simply not what Jehovah's Witnesses are taught. So in no way can you, can you say that Watchtower has has urged Lauren to do this, or that Lauren is acting on instructions uh, in Watchtower literature. However, at the same time, it must be acknowledged that when you follow Watchtower teachings to their, to their end, and when you fully buy into what the beliefs are surrounding Armageddon, in a weird way, Lauren's actions make sense. And that's the disturbing thing. Because in, in Lauren's mind, factoring in the depression, factoring in the mental health issues, it's, con it's understandable or at least conceivable that someone would think, I need to end my life. While I'm in the process of doing that, why don't I ensure that those I love the most are going to make it through Armageddon? That obviously, obviously is appalling and inconceivable to those of us who aren't indoctrinated and who, who, who don't suffer from mental health issues. But you can, at least, you can at least begin to understand the logic of what's going on there. And it raises very disturbing questions about the whole doomsday aspect of Jehovah's Witness teachings. Because unfortunately, when you have a religion that believes that everyone deserves to die unless they can bring themselves to follow a certain group of leaders. And I'm sorry, if you're watching this as a Jehovah's Witness, probably some of you are saying, oh, that's not what we believe at all. And uh, only God can decide who will survive through Armageddon. Um, watch one of my latest videos, Taking on Tony Four, in, in, where Tony Morris in Trinidad tells the assembled throngs that they are blood guilty and worthy of death if they fail to sufficiently participate in warning people that they will die unless they can get through Armageddon. That is the extent to which this is believed and taught by Jehovah's Witnesses. You have to be a Jehovah's Witness to survive Armageddon. Therefore, if you're not a Jehovah's Witness, when Armageddon comes, you are worthy of death. If you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, look out of your window, see the people walking down the street, you will have to be glad that they are destroyed or you will have to agree with their destruction when Armageddon comes. That is the bottom line. I'm sorry, that's what you have to believe. And I'm very, very grateful that instances like this are so few and far between that, in fact, I can't think of another instance where the doomsday ideology has been so clearly linked with a murder-suicide as, as is the case here, I can't think of an, another example. And, and I'm, I'm genuinely glad about that. I'm relieved about that. But even so, we need to 
reconcile the fact that this has happened and we need to reconcile the fact that at least to some degree, if the media article is credible, I have no reason to believe it isn't, and if the suicide note is to be believed, you have to reconcile the fact that at least to some degree, Watchtower teachings about Armageddon played a part in in a husband and two children and to extent and to an extent in the mother no longer being here they they factored into the loss of all of those people who should still be with us they should still be here i mean this happened what on the 16th of february they they should still be you know be around they should still be enjoying life but they're not here was shunning responsible for this happening I'm, yes, I'm sure to some degree Shunning will have played a part. Shunning will have, I'm sure, exacerbated this. Um, shunning and ostracism, especially when when weaponized in this way, uh, in the way that witnesses weaponize it, is very, very cruel. We are social creatures. We cannot handle it. We just can't when someone turns their back on us. It's just in our nature to recoil at that and to be horrified by it. So shunning, yes, almost certainly looking at what we know about this story played a part, but so did the depression and so did the mental illness, the loss, the loss of Lauren's mother when she was young, no doubt, and almost certainly the doomsday teachings and fear of Armageddon all will have um, played a, a role in what happened. And it's just very sad. And again, I didn't want to talk about it until more was known. And there's still things that we don't know. I mean, how can we know what was going on exactly in Lauren's head when she went on this rampage? Uh, we, we can't know. And again, I don't want to make a martyr of her because she's a killer. She, she just is. Um, if, she, if she'd survived the incident, there would be compassion shown to her uh, based on the fact that she uh, has um, a history of mental illness. There would, that, all of that would be factored in. But first and foremost, she would be a killer and a murderer. And, and we cannot um, excuse that just because she is suffering like we are, or at least she's suffering like those of us who are being shunned. Um, but did Watchtower have a hand in this? I think it did. I think it did. And I don't think... The reason why I'm making this video is because I don't think that this incident deserves to fade into history without us standing here and saying, we know why this happened. We know why this family are no longer with us. Or at least we know um, that the Jehovah's Witness teachings had a part in what happened. And that in all likelihood, these people would still be alive if it wasn't for the absolutist uh, doomsday teachings of a, an American sect. So those were my thoughts on this story. Uh, take or leave them as you wish. I'm sure you'll all have your own ideas as to how this happened and why this happened, but I thought I'd share with you what's been going on in my head. I hope that, well, it's not really an enjoyable video, but I hope you have at least found it interesting. And as always, thank you for watching.